creator for milk paint. Today we're going to talk about using milk paint in the outdoors and its application and we're going to show you samples of how it weathers too. We've done a bunch of extensive weather testing and we'll be able to show you that in just a minute as well. We're going to be working on, on uh, some columns. These are actually from my house, an 1896 country farmhouse. These columns have been stripped down and prepared. These are old growth fir, which is a nice wood, very watt resistant. It actually actually will receive the paint very well as well. Um, so they're all ready to go. We're going to get that in a minute. There's a uh, column here that we're going to paint. But for now, we're going to show you how to mix up the paint. These, this particular project, we're going to paint it with uh, white milk paint. So I'm going to show you the actual mixing process and how we do it using our outdoor additive which is a uh, product that helps give more longevity. And one other thing that we're going to show that's not even illustrated on our website that we're pretty much uh, debuting in this video, which is the, uh, the outdoor samples that I'll show you later, actually have pure tongue oil mixed in with it. The 100% uh, pure tongue oil had, will mix well with the milk paint because milk paint is an emulsion. And emulsion means it will readily accept the oil. So let's talk a little bit about milk paint while we mix it up here and tell you what it is. Milk paint's actually been around for um, hundreds of years. It's a uh, environmentally safe, uh, biodegradable paint that's non-toxic and safe for the environment. It is, uh, you know, gradually breaks down and wears away on a wood surface. This color is actually the white milk paint. The coloring in here is titanium dioxide. That's what makes the color. And we're actually going to uh, show you how to mix the paint. This particular bag contains 10 cups of powder. And as soon as I cut it open here, we'll dump it in the water. Inside the bag here is, is an instructions. The instructions tell you what, how to mix the paint and what's in here. So for each, uh, it's a one-to-one -one mix. It's one part powder to one part water. So what we're going to do is we have a two cup measure here. So you can either add the water later or add the water before. But what we're going to do is we're just going to measure in 10 cups of water right away into this five gallon bucket. So that's two, four, six, all the powder in on top of the water. I kind of like this process best because uh, it doesn't allow the, uh, the uh, dry powder to get stuck to the bottom of the bucket and you're not constantly trying to stir it up when the bucket's already wetted. So all we really have to do is just dump it in here and then we're immediately going to add the uh, outdoor additive which this is a borate based compound when mixed with the paint gives much more longevity and durability. It also helps as a, uh, a natural biocide to keep away mold and mildew from attacking paint. So these, this particular bag is already pre-measured to mix, to add mix into one gallon of paint. So all you got to do, if you're mixing a gallon of paint, open the bag up and then add it in. The other thing we're going to add too to the milk paint is our, is our anti-foam. The anti-foam uh, will stop the paint from foaming up. Helps also help it disperse more. Helps all the powder disperse more quickly in the water. If you have hard water, this helps a lot to soften the water and cut the surface tension so that the paint will mix really quickly. So we're going to add a few drops. It's actually two or three drops per quart. It's really you don't want to add too much, but probably less is less is better. So there's about five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 drops, that's probably good for a gallon. Now the best tool that I found for mixing the paint in the bucket is one of these uh, paint stirrers on a drill. This is probably the best way to mix this, this size quantity of paint. You kind of have to start slow on top and gradually mix it in. And uh, the powder will disperse into the water. 
bring out a powder. You don't want to go too fast to just blow powder out there on top of the water. And we'll see water to the uh, pan. This is going to take a few minutes to get this all mixed up. And you might spend five or ten minutes just mixing the paint, dispersing the water, dispersing the powder into the water. So we have some, we're going to kind of skip ahead here. I already have a bucket that's pre-mixed. We're going to pull that over here, slide this off to the side, put our stirrer in here. And this is already thoroughly mixed. You know, at the any foam in it, this has been sitting around for probably an hour and a half, two hours, which is good. Helps the uh, powder disperse really well. And so what we're going to do now is add the other ingredient. This is, the, this is what I was talking about that, that we haven't even illustrated on our website yet, but we found that this makes the paint last at least ten times longer you know, when used in the exterior. The key to this is it can't be any regular tongue oil, it has to be pure tongue oil. Other tongue oil products are actually modified tongue oil products or they're polymerized tongue oil. Pure tongue oil is not polymerized, it's not processed, it's not heated, it's pure tongue oil extracted right from the tongue nut. And what we found with our testing is we added about 15% pure tongue oil to your volume. So this is 120, 28 ounces, a gallon is 128 ounces. So with 128 ounces we take 15% of that, which is like 19.2 ounces. Now that's not so critical. As long as you stay around 19 to 21 ounces, that's pretty good. So what we have here is we have a quart canning jar. And this is just a quick measure for me. You know, we have a 16 ounce mark on it and a 20 ounce mark. So I'm just going to fill it up to a 20 ounce mark, you know, with pure tongue oil. And then we're going to put that in there. There's uh, 16. And there's 20. Right there. So people would say, oh, you can't add oil to water paints. But you can. See, because milk paint has an unusual property where it's an emulsion. So it will readily accept the oil. The oil will not separate out. Once it's in there, it won't separate. And the other beautiful thing is if you need to thin the paint down, you can still thin it with water. Just thin it right down. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour this tongue oil in. It'll go right into the paint and mix right up. in there and actually it's it's ready to use. We're ready to paint with that now. If the paint appears to be a little bit too thick, you know, let's just test it, see what it looks like. Not bad. Consistency is pretty good. And uh, that's probably just about right. If we felt that it was too thick, we could actually thin it down some more with water. And then the, uh, if you want to look at paints historically, milk paint, traditionally, they would have added oil to, to it. They could have added lard. They might have added some fat to it for an exterior use, but pure tongue oil, even though it's fairly new to this country, came, came about in the 19th century, you know, instead of 18th century when this paint would have been made. This pure tongue oil is way far superior than like linseed oil or any other product. So that makes this paint, it's going to make it a superior exterior paint.